Okay, welcome to Tweet Thistle Primitives. Um, I promised a video or a tutorial on how to do these floors. I am not an artist. I can't draw a straight line to save my life. Um, I think instead of painting trees, I should have been painting lumber because the floors really came out well. But that's not because I'm an artist. I really think anybody can do this. So just a real quick um, how-to. I will post, um, after I do the video, I'll post on the bottom. I don't know if it'll be on this side or on this side. For all the different products that I used uh, so that you have some idea of what you need to get started. They're easy to find and not terribly expensive products at all. Um, I don't know how it's going to hold up. I assume well it's a mineral paint is the base. The base on the floor here was not very well prepared um, when it was originally painted and this is painted over that so we'll see how it goes. The floor has been prepared by painting with a single coat of the fusion mineral paint um, in a yellow, I'll give you that color name, I don't remember off the top of my head, um, allowed to dry and then blue painters tape. I wanted wide plank floors, um, you can do narrower if you want. The the rolling pin that uh, is the grain painting um, is from Artistic Artistic Painting Studio. Again, I'll post all the information on the bottom. That roller, I believe, is either six or seven inches uh, wide, so you have to go through twice. I went through twice in order to get the larger plank floors done. Um, but basically what I did is I used the Fusion Mineral Paint Glaze and the paint. I did one jar of it with the glaze in a black and then another jar uh, with the glaze and uh, chocolate brown. And these are both about 50-50, so 50% glaze, 50% um, paint. I, it's not rocket science. I actually use a small brush. People might cringe. The sponge brush didn't seem to hit it on the ground. I wanted something, again, to kind of give that grainy look. So I'll start. It's just mushing it on. You're going to be able to see through um, to the floor below, to the paint. That's kind of what you want. And I only had to... Uh, put the blue painters tape at one end and then also at the line here when I get to the end Where the other boards are I kind of wanted one to be lighter than others uh, so that it looked like two separate boards or now here in this case three separate boards all in a row so these colors are too closely matched and so I'm going to take a little bit of the black and I'm just going to literally mush it in. That's all it takes. And so then that board is going to be a darker, a darker color than the one that's next to it. So the glaze, if you try to do this just with the paint, um, it dries too fast. And you would never have enough time to paint the entire board and then go back with your roller. Um, the other nice thing with the glaze having such a long dry time is if you don't like the effect that you get, if you don't like what it looks like, you can always go back with your brush and just rub that section out, brush that section out, and go over it again. This floor is a concrete floor. There are dips and valleys, there are little hole marks, um, there are cracks, there are places where because the roller is flat, um, the roller won't touch, it won't make contact exactly with the floor in those sections. Um, that's okay. This isn't supposed to be an exact replica of a wood floor. It's a faux finish. It's an illusion. So when you walk in, you think it's wood. It gives the room a completely different feel, but it's not wood. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. If you're going for perfect, get wood. 
because it's not, it, it isn't and it's not meant to be. Um, it's been so much fun and the reaction from people has been so awesome because you just don't expect to see what looks like a wood floor on a concrete floor. And I knew that this is what I wanted to do when I saw the rollers available, uh, but honestly, I never expected the effect to come out as well as it did. It's, it's 10 times better than what I had expected to come up with. So again, I'm just smushing the colors together. It does not have to be perfect. You don't want it to be perfect. You can see the yellow underneath. Um, it's mixed with the glaze. There's a lot of move time, a lot of dry time. Squish it this way and that way. Some of the areas, because the underlying paint, the original paint on the floor, um, it really wasn't, the concrete floor was, it hadn't been prepped properly. Um, and it's been there for a long time. When I would put the blue painter's tape down, it actually even took some of the yellow paint off. And I thought, oh, this is a disaster waiting to happen. But actually those sections where the painter's tape actually pulled the uh, yellow paint off, those sections when the brown goes over it become very dark and it just makes it look like knots. So what could be thought of as a, a bad thing really isn't. Again, I just want it to be a little bit different than the board beside, so I throw a little bit of the dark in and mush it into the rest of what becomes the board over the, over the blue. Um, I know I've told people before, I have patterns also available for the pinafore patterns. Um, or Japanese aprons, and also the European linen. So I have it as the pattern and also as the kit. I've said several times, I paint in these, um, I garden in these, I've got the nice deep pockets, I do my antique shows in these. Uh, so these are, these are also available and I will post a link for that also. So it's just about done. I don't know how long that took, maybe Oh, I don't know, three minutes, no idea. It's just sort of a feathered together, nothing special at all, just a mixture. I'm gonna take the roller. Let's move the paints out of the way. I use a um, garden pad to lean on because the concrete floor is really hard. I wish I had two, if I could make a suggestion. Have one for your knees or your butt, your hip, and another for your opposite hand that you're gonna use when you're painting because the, the floor gets old and the back gets crunchy. So I just take it, I kind of line it up with the area next door, and I'm gonna roll. And I'm gonna just try to keep it lined against that section that's already done. Not perfect. In the end, I kind of flip it. You could just go again. I like to flip it, line up the centers. Again, the part of the floor there is lower so the center of the roller does not touch it, but that's okay. It's not supposed to be perfect. We need to get over this perfectness in doing some of these things because we can have some great outcomes if we're just willing to give it a shot. Kind of hit it here and there. And then the other thing that I do, you can buy a flogging brush, which is just a paintbrush that's quite a bit longer, so you can hit with it. Um, I didn't have one of those. I was trying to do this quick while I was doing a transition in the shop. So I just take it like this and I pounce it on top. And the look that you get from doing that is it almost looks like when the boards go through the mill and they have the, 
the big cut marks from the saw and kind of get an effect of that on it. Now, one of the other things that I did when I started this process, wasn't sure how it was gonna turn out, so I only bought one jar of the Fusion Mineral paint of the yellow. And I painted half the floor in that section, and then I came back, got another jar, and painted this section. This section was wet, that section was dry. And I started doing the grain painting over there. I think I got two boards done, looked up and saw how awesome it looked. And I got so excited, I went that way to get to my phone and walked right through the yellow paint. So if you come to look at the floor, if you happen to be in the area and you come to Tweed Thistle Primitives, I'm at the very end um, in Seville Antiques under new ownership. If you come in and you look really close, you may find my footprints because I was not gonna paint over it and you really didn't have to. So just remember when you get really excited about it, kind of be mindful of where the wet paint is because you will just be amazed at the effect that you get out of it. So you can also go back the opposite direction with the paintbrush, hit it a little bit like that. That also is gonna put a little bit of a grain mark in some of those areas where the floor was just lower. And that's it. And there's another board. It does not take long. It takes a while for it to dry. It takes a while for it to dry, especially when it's 90 degrees outside and about 110 humidity. But uh, that's it. If you have any questions, put the comments down below. Hopefully I'll be able to post this video in a way that allows you to ask questions. Um, I'm kind of new to that part of it. You can find Tweed Thistle Primitives on Facebook and Seville Antiques also on Facebook, where you can find anything and everything you can imagine in the primitive world. Thank you.